girlfriends, but I'm off for the day. And so much to see, so much to do. And I walk by the Regency Theater. And what's playing but his girl Friday. Mm -hmm. And never seen it, never seen it. But I'd never seen Cary Grant on the big screen. Wow. So I got all of New York out there waiting for me, but no, I go into the Regency. And it was really my first classic film on the big screen. And you know, I was touched, life has changed, and I've um, been in love with Cary Grant ever since. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not alone, I know, but mm -hmm. oh Lord, uh, what, a, what an experience. Now, in, um, Roz Russell used to tell the story that she was um, resting in Connecticut when she got a call to hurry back to Hollywood as she was being loaned out from MGM to make a picture at Columbia with Cary Grant. Well, she was on cloud nine until the next morning when on the train into New York, she read a New, uh, New York Times article saying that <clears throat> about all the women who turned down the part first. <laughs> well, you know, I got a little suspicious of that story. So thanks to ProQuest, I went back and checked. And what was really in the paper that day was that the production of the new Howard Hawks Cary Grant film was being held up until Roz Russell could get to California because Irene Dunn had turned, had withdrawn from the cast. Well, what Russell would learn a few weeks later was that Dunn had herself been a replacement for Jean Arthur, who had refused to do the part and been suspended for three months because of it. Wow. Her contract, of course, was extended that amount of time because it wouldn't be for four more years until Olivia de Havilland won her lawsuit that liberated actors. <laughs> Well, reportedly, offers had indeed gone out to Ginger Rogers, Claudette Colbert, Carol, Carl Lombard, among others. Now, what did all those actresses know that Russell didn't? Well, clearly, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, we know that Arthur and Dunn held, her, held their own with Cary Grant. It turns out that Jean's problem was actually with Hawks, not Grant. What we know for sure is that His Girl Friday would have been a very different movie without mm -hmm. Russell. There's little reason for anyone to think Russell could have pulled off the comedy in early September of 1939, unless they'd seen the women, which only the week before had premiered in this very theater. Wow. Wow. Now, we don't know for sure if even Hawk saw it, but when Roz arrived in the set in mid-September, in okay, September of 39, Hitler's invaded, the war started, England's declared war, whole other world of, uh, going on across the pond. But here in Hollywood, Hawks gave Roz what she considered to be the silent treatment. Each day added to her insecurity, so she sought out Grant's advice. He told her, if he doesn't like something, he's gonna say it. Silence is his highest praise. Mm -hmm. Well, she tried that, and after a couple of days, she went to Hawks and said, what am I doing, you know, what do you want, what do you want? And he didn't say anything for the <laughs> longest 30 seconds. And then he said, ah, just keep pushing them around the way you've been doing. It'll be great. <laughs> that gave her the confidence she needed, and one of the reasons I think we still love this movie is the fun that these two greats are having mm. playing off each other. Now, I don't know how many of you saw the original 1931 front page. I think they screened it mm -hmm. here last year. Um, and as classic as that Ben Heck, Charlie MacArthur script is, I think His Girl Friday stands alone as a remake that is superior to its original. In retrospect, it's so obvious Hildy should have been a woman. <laughs> but it took Howard Hawks to come up with the idea. Hex bought into it. He said, fine. But he couldn't do the script because he was making more money than anyone had ever made before. Script doctoring for Selznick on Gone with the Wind, something like $10,000 a week. Wow. So Hawks turned to Charlie wow. Letterer, Marion Davies' nephew, who would go on to adapt Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Hawks liked the script, but then he brought in Maury Riskin to punch it up. Ross Russell, in turn, found an advertising fellow adept at one-liners, dad sings to her lines. On top of that, Hawks allowed for ad-libbing, a bow here to Ross throwing her purse at Grant, his references, of course, to both Ar Archie Leach and Ralph Bellamy. <laughs> now, all this should have been a recipe for disaster. But miraculously, it produced one of the funniest and most clever screwball comedies of all times. The overlapping dialogue predates Robert Altman by decades. It had been tried before, but Hawks knew what he was doing. He made sure, as he said, the beginnings and ends of the sentences were unnecessary. They were made for overlapping. 
The lines, though, are delivered so quickly. It supposedly was reported that the average speaking is 100 to 150 words a minute. Here, they're delivered at 240 words a minute. <laughs> An absolute record. So the script was really long, even though the movie isn't. <laughs> and that reminds me that one of the things that I'm sure you've noticed it, especially at TCM with comedies, that people who've seen the movies before tend to start laughing right before the left <laughs> The few in the audience who haven't seen it before, I hope you can still hear it, so keep your... <laughs> you know, it's like two seconds before Jungle Red, everybody... <laughs> now, the last thing is, I try to resist ever pointing out something that's gonna take you out of the movie in any way. But I have to give a shout out to the costume designer, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Palouche. We all know Edith Head, Adrian, and Travis Banton, but Columbia's Palouche hardly ever rates a mention. He dressed Claudia Colbert for It Happened One Night, mm -hmm. Irene Dunn for The Awful Truth, not those, those dresses, <laughs> but he outdid himself with the fashions he created for Roz Russell here in his world, right? Mm -hmm. That zigzag coat alone, the hat that goes with it, well, you're about to enjoy his wizardry and so much more. Bask in the glory of His Girl Friday.